Hello, accountability buddies. This is Les with another episode of Less is More Healthy. And I am, again, recording this from the road. Um... Hello, accountability buddies. This is Les with another episode of Less is More Healthy. I should probably switch to narrow for this, huh? Um, and I am uh, obviously coming to you from the car. Uh, I just parked. I've like recorded a couple of different versions of this episode. Um, I'm trying to do a review of the rail trail that I rode this weekend. Um, I promised it in my last episode, really want to do it. Um, but I keep fouling it up. I get rambly. I call one town the wrong town's name. Um, so anyway, just to get started in case I foul it up, the real trail I rode was the Boxford to Georgetown section of the border to Boston trail system, proposed border to Boston trail system. Um, so this trail system, uh, is proposed to run from the border of Massachusetts, the whole way to Boston. What they want is a fully continuous trail that runs, obviously, from the border of Massachusetts to Boston. Um, And currently, um, there are many of the trail sections mapped out, um, proposed. Um, Many of them are already approved and under work or under construction, I guess is the right way to say it. And um, so in the case of the section that I rode, Um, it's a good ride from my house. So the way to get to this trail, you can obviously, I drive out to a trailhead, get your bike on the trail and ride from there. Um, piece of cake, lots of different places where you can go. Um, what I chose to do was ride from my house out to the Peabody Danvers area get onto the trail from there, ride out to the end of the Topsville Linear Common section of the trail, and get off in Boxford, ride through Boxford, um, some, you know, country roads, um, and then get on to the Boxford trail section. Um, and, you know, your mileage may vary with that. Uh, the access point for the trail is a right-of-way through a botanical garden, Um, The Botanical Garden is uh, hardy plants from one of the Carolinas brought to Massachusetts in a garden in the woods that is fenced off to keep the deer out. Um, So the the Botanical Garden is actually quite nice. It's beautiful. And um, I I enjoyed actually riding through that. Um, You know, I didn't spend as long looking as probably I should have due to mosquitoes and black flies and me not wearing bug spray. Um, I would suggest if you're going to do this section of trail, wear bug spray. Um, I haven't generally had the need to wear bug spray um, as part of this uh, when I ride these trails because I'm moving too fast. The speed that you can keep up on most of the trail um, is pretty high. And um, generally speaking, it's not necessary. In this section of trail, bug spray is absolutely necessary. Um, so, uh, the other thing, so this, the roadway through Boxford to the rail trailhead, um, is hilly, it's smooth, but it is country road. Um, and so the thing to remember about country roads is that depending on the day of the week you go, the time of the day you go, they can be busier than you expect. Um, I went on a Sunday afternoon, so not that busy, um, actually pretty safe feeling, Uh, It was clear cyclists are there a lot, um, and families were cycling on the roadway too. Um, Of course, any road has its own dangers. Um, So when I got to the actual, like, access point for the trail, um, it was confusing as to how to get to the trail. My GPS was telling me to go in one direction. Trail signs were telling me to go in another direction. Um, If you do use the botanical garden as a way to get there, Uh, You go through the fence, go into the trail, and immediately head right. Um, And once you head right, you just keep kind of following that trail, and then you will literally hit the rail trail. Um, You can't miss it. Uh, You're going to go past a a fenced-off area that is someone's backyard. I I actually ended up in their backyard. felt really bad about it. Totally accidentally trespassed. Got out of there fast. 
Um, and then the other, the other thing, um, is that there are a lot of sections like that. You are going to feel like you are riding through someone's backyard. Um, a lot of the rail trail has been used as people's backyard. People have been like maintaining the trail as their backyard for years. Um, and so a lot of people are pretty salty about the rail trail because they're taking away your backyard. Um, so there are definitely areas where I felt like I was riding through someone's backyard. Um, and I kind of was. So I think being a good trail steward and someone who's like conscientious and careful um, on the rail trail is super important, especially in these unfinished sections, just to show that people who use the rail trails aren't buttholes. Um, so there's that aspect of it. Um, and of course, the, you're going to be able to hear that, I'm sure. Um, the other thing is a lot of this trail is not finished. The finished trails in Massachusetts tend to be made out of uh, crushed, compacted gravel. This trail is not. It's grassy. Um, there's some gravel and mud surface. Um, and there are some sections that are clearly um, not finished at all and not maintained much at all. Um, so a section that I traveled through was basically all grass. Every, uh, I'm getting super rambly on this. Um, but the point that I want to say is like the trail is not a gravel surface. It is, it reminds me of a logging access road from where I grew up in Maine. So there's some gravel that's sunken into the mud that's gotten a little compacted, but it's super rough. Um, there are loose sections, there are muddy sections. There's grass growing up through the middle of the roadway um, or the rail trail. It's hard to pick a line uh, because you can't see the tracks. Uh, the tracks are overgrown. There are some sections where it's clear people who live along the rail trail are mowing them and taking care of it. Um, there are also sections that are incredibly overgrown. Um, I would suggest if you're going to do some of these sections that you wear gloves. Uh, the blackberry brambles um, have been knocked back, but they are overgrowing into the trail, making the two tracks for that were part of like access road. Um, almost impossible to get into, so you have to ride in the middle. Um, there are sections of the bramble section, as I like to call it, um, where people have, have knocked back those blackberry bramble. But um, like mountain biking gloves would be helpful here, um, just to protect your hands and skin from those brambles. Um, so there are also sections that are very swampy. Um, a lot of this section of the trail borders against ponds and streams. Um, there's a section where there's a footbridge that goes across the stream, um, which is easy enough to walk onto, but much more difficult to ride a bike onto. I was not able to get my bike up onto it. You also will not make it through the stream on your bike. You shouldn't be riding through streams anyway, unless there's, you know, a sturdy surface to do so. Muddy streams should not be ridden through. It's bad for the ecosystem. Um, anyway, there's this footbridge. I couldn't get up onto it until I got off my bike and walked it. Um, you know, your mileage may vary. You might be able to just ride boop, right up onto it and have no problems. Um, there's that. And then there's another section where there's uh, clearly the railway, the trains used to go over another stream that fed into a pond. Um, and what the trail maintenance folks did was just slap a couple of two by eights across this um, and nail them down into the surface that used to be there. Um, well, the surface that's underneath is pretty rotten. Uh, the nails have rusted away and the boards are barely attached to this surface. Uh, it was pretty sketchy to get across. I wouldn't, I didn't ride my bike across this. Uh, I pushed my bike across because I didn't know how sturdy it was going to be or how sketchy it was going to be. It was pretty sketchy. I did make it across, no problem. Um, and then the, the trail, there's another section of the trail that is, I just called it the mud pit. Um, it's where the train, uh, the tr tracks were dug into a hill and through a hill uh, rather than going over because the train couldn't make it over the grade. 
Um, and so what ends up happening here, because there's no longer gravel in there, uh, which would have been there for the train, um, the, the, um, it's just turned into a swamp. It was a, it's a mud pit. I made it about 15 feet into it before I had to turn around, go back, and use the detour that went up and over the hill, which is true mountain biking single track. Uh, I was able to ride my bike through some of it, but certainly not all of it. And it was a little sketchy with the roots and slipperiness of that trail. Um, but it's, it's a very short section, um, maybe 150 to 200 feet of single track um, before you're right back onto the trail. Um, but you're, you know, I think in dry weather, you might be able to make it through that section of swamp. Uh, but it was just like, I was going to sink up to my axles and, and not make it through. My tires are too narrow. I think even on a fat tire bike, you're not going to make it through that section of swamp. Um, so yeah, using the detour is necessary. You'll see that in the video at some point. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's really what the, the trail is largely unfinished. It's very rough. If you're going to go out and tackle this trail, I would highly suggest a bike um, with fatter tires, two inch at a minimum. My one and a half were a little sketchy, pretty slow on the surface. Some sections are doable on a road bike for sure. I mean, it's, it's hard packed and grassy, but you could do it on a road bike. Would I want to do it on a road bike? Hell no. Um, a mountain bike would make this much more enjoyable. There are also the sections that are single track, which you're gonna you're gonna want some suspension on. This would have been so much more comfortable with at least some sort of front suspension, or a um, a suspension seat post, something softer on my behind. Um, definitely rough, but worth it. Uh, I had a great time doing it. It was definitely super challenging. I did not ride it the whole way back. Uh, I took the roadway back to the. Uh, Topsfield Linear Common, where I rode that the whole way home. Um, so, so yeah, challenging ride, fun ride, definitely an adventure, worth the effort, worth the time. Um, and eventually, when that's finished, that's going to be an amazing trail. It's going to be incredibly beautiful. There are also access points to hiking trails and mountain biking trails off that trail. Um, so, uh, looking forward to that rail trail getting finished out here. And with that, I so end my review largely positive, but be prepared for what the trail will bring. And with that, I'll see you next time.